Yes, uh, as I say, with the five or six people on the planet listening to this conversation. Uh, now, I, I want you to give me a little bit of credit that it was back in June, before he ever went on the, on the fucking Gary Null show, that you told me we were talking about me coming down to Bailey's and, and, and you said that I needed to, I was saying, well, I'll come down there in January, and you were telling me, well, Hambo, you ain't going to come down here in January because we're, we're all fucked by October. It was yeah. now November, so what yeah. happened? So, I mean, I'm very glad you were wrong, bro. What I, what I'm I glad you're not extinct. But what, what I tell What I tell people personally, okay. not for on the air. Well, so you're on the air, so yeah, before, you say, this, so, before wait, you say wait, this, before you say this, before you say this, you're on the air. I know I'm on the air. Okay. But that was a private conversation between the two of us. And I and, and not to be as shared in public. And I did like not. you've just done. By the way. <laughs> but you've come out on the Gary Nolso and with and with Sandy. So you've come out publicly with it. No. What I told you and what I told them was very different. What I told them was something like, I can't imagine we have beyond October. What I told you was more affirmative. I was making a prediction, a personal prediction to you, and it was a personal note. What I was saying in public with Gary Knoll and with Sandy, told us, was that I'm pretty strong, I'm pretty convinced that we're headed for an ice-free Arctic this year. But I did not make the prediction like I did with you personally. And so what I do with people individually, personally, is I go deeper and I present what I think is a more dire outcome than what I present in public, believe it or not. And so, in public, I said, it's, I, I'm, I feel pretty strongly that we are not going to have ice in the Arctic Ocean, or at least we're going to have less than a million square kilometers of ice in the Arctic Ocean in September. And I was stunned that it didn't happen. I was absolutely stunned because you started looking at June, and then you're looking at it in July. So what happened? And it, the one, the refreeze began sooner than expected, sooner than it's ever done in recorded history. So the refreeze started early. Interestingly, the October didn't add any more volume yeah. through the whole month. So it's so just holding steady. It's just holding steady. Yeah. The multi-year ice is effectively gone. We were, we were one storm away, one serious storm away from removing all the Arctic ice, and I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised that we made it through another year. We yeah, yeah. Um, okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's just uh, leave that one then. Um, well, I, I don't really want to leave it because I, actually, there's a, a few points I, I, I'd like to make about it, and it's about scientific um, predictions, um, which uh, McPherson has come out with, which has proved to be wrong, um, which mm -hmm. is, is something which I tend to concentrate on a bit, like uh, blue, yeah. blue ocean events, which just didn't happen. Like um, he was going to die. A wet bulb temperature in October. I think we we're all going to die. There's a lot of rather bizarre predictions going on. Which um, yeah. somebody like Peter Wadhams made prediction a prediction like that, but he stood up and said he'd made it and said he'd make a mistake. Whereas yeah. um, McPherson doesn't really seem to want to do that. He just moves on to right. the next one. Um, right. So um, I, I do personally have issues with that. I think it can be very traumatizing for uh, many people who follow McPherson person to hear this sort of thing um, yeah. and, and not have any support and who knows what they, they may or they may do to themselves um, when they hear yeah. this kind of information, how it can be absolutely life-changing for them. They may turn off Facebook and just do anything uh, and never go back again to listen to the next version of uh, what has been called his ponderings. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I, 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 I would just like to stick that in there and, and also mention that um, Right from the start, um, McPherson has never really, really wanted to show support um, for um, for what he does. He came over here to Europe, and there was no real support at all given to those people that he presented to. Um, since yeah. since then, he's had a little course in grief counselling, and I think he thinks that is sufficient support to give to people. Um, I don't personally, and I think people need this. this is why the near-term human extinction support group is up. And 
and running because uh, we all know how we can't talk to lots of people about this issue. And if you've got nobody to talk to, then people can go there. Um, right. But Guy wasn't even prepared to uh, to um, to mention that in his European tour because I think he felt it was in competition with a uh, with Nature Bats last. Uh, oh. Um, yeah, there's been a lot of that going on between me and Guy, so there's no love lost between me and him, I assure you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting, you know, when you, you bring up the predictions. And, you know, I understand scientists make predictions. And like you said, you know, people own up to when they're wrong and, and things like that. And some and some people obviously don't. I think what's what's interesting about that is. Um, as a as a, a community, and you know, I'm talking like you know people who consider themselves doomers, near term human extinction, abrupt climate change, so on and so forth, um, is uh, getting to the point where you do not, and I, I understand this takes a long time um, to not latch on to um, one person's um, prediction or anybody's prediction, and, and, and consider that to be the absolute truth. Because, you know, as we've talked before, Mike, and other people have talked, there's so many moving parts to this and so many variables. And to make a prediction about human extinction with all those moving parts and then to narrow it down to, you know, a year in the history of time <laughs> is, is, is quite ludicrous, quite frankly. And, and I understand why people do it because they, they put together data and they think, well, okay, we think this is going to be – um, about when it, it, it could occur. Um, but if we really look at what we really know and how much we don't know, I think it's pretty obvious that we don't know um, a hell of a lot um, because we're discovering things all the time. And the thing that probably is going to get us, we haven't even come across yet, maybe. I mean, it's, it's just one of those things. Yeah, I and agree. The other part that you brought up um, – about making those predictions and people coming across. And you're right. Most of the people that probably contact folks like, you know, Guy or yourself or myself or Carolyn or, or Jennifer, um, a lot of times people are in a pretty vulnerable position because they're looking to get more information. You know, and they do a Google search or they go and do a Facebook search and they come across our names because we have some stature in this community because we've written things, we've done interviews and so on and so forth. Um, and then that's what I was talking about earlier with, you know, the conflict that has come up um, between um, some of us and Guy is that we, we consider it just to be unethical that it, when you have that position in a community that you need to behave in a particular way because people are coming to you pretty vulnerable. And um, in taking advantage of that in any sense to me is, is clearly an unethical, um, you know, move on anybody's part. And I don't expect people to be absolutely perfect, but when it happens and it becomes a pattern, well, then that becomes a problem. And that's, I think, when people in communities need to step up and, you know, and hold people accountable. And that's really what's, what, what is what we're attempting to do. Um, and so just to kind of clarify what, what you know, what, what we're, what we're up to. So, yeah. And, uh, you know, a guy, um, has obviously got thousands of supporters. Um, oh, absolutely, you're right. Yeah, he's got a lot of people to follow him. Yeah, he has got a lot of people to follow him, and, and uh, he promotes himself all the time. And sometimes I think some of these, uh, he's, he's a bit sensationalist um, to, to grab people's attention, you know. Um, but but then he just seems to move on, and nobody ever seems to question him. They always try and defend him. So I find that a bit a bit scary. Um, and, and maybe you'd like to say something about you know because there's a, there's a definite trend um, yeah. with people who are in p positions of power. Um, right. Would you like to say something about that? Yeah, I mean, well, it, you know, you you bring up uh, a good point. It's when you have a following, um, as we all do on some level. Um, some yes. of us have more people that follow us than you know than others, but there's a, there comes a responsibility with that. And again, I know people screw up. We get it. Um, and you know, but with that responsibility comes you know what I have found is the best way to deal with it is to is to self reflect constantly because as we're dealing with the collapse of civilization and the biosphere. And, you know, uh, an, an insane dominant culture, 
Um, I understand that's a lot of baggage and people like to say, well, you can't bring up things in people's personal life when you look at the big picture of what's going on. And I call bullshit on that because people, we're all in positions now where we are incredibly fragile and vulnerable and we don't know necessarily what's going on. So we rely on people who have some expertise, who have some scientific background and who have done a fair amount of research, not only to deliver that information accurately and not sensationalize it at all, but then to have and offer services where we can deal with what we're, we've been put in our, what's been put in our laps, and then not to be taken advantage of when we come to those people. I, I, I'm surprised, uh, you know, that, I mean, <laughs> he keeps making predictions about the world ending and then never um, just comes up with a new prediction and never really acknowledges that the previous prediction didn't quite work out. So, you know, I don't really want to go turn this into a, you know, criticize, he, somebody criticizes me, I criticize them type mm-hmm, of thing. Okay. I'd, ra- I'd, ra- I'd rather talk about issues, really. Yeah, oh, you know, okay, that's, um, that's fine. So, uh, you know, it wouldn't be the first time somebody's criticized me, I guess, and you'd have to ask him or somebody, um, you know, would have to ask him, why he uh, does this. I mean, I I, I did a few videos a, a while back in, in, I guess it was February, March, talking about um, cognitive distortions in thinking, you know, all or nothing thinking. You know, we're here now, 7.6 billion people will go to nothing, absolutely nothing, you know, in a short period of time, you know, according to this prediction. And, uh you know, there would be signs of it happening and, you know, maybe it'll, like, like it's not all or nothing, generally, when you hear things, people saying things are black and white, all or nothing, there's some distorted thinking there. Um, generally, it doesn't pan out in, as, as that case. There's something, you know, in between, there's a gray area in between black and white. Yeah, black. yeah, I, I don't really want to turn this up, but I, I just see, I just don't, you know, because um, he called you out, and I just want to give, I just wanted to give you the opportunity to, to respond. It, it was, you know, because Hambone had said he'd done five thousand, um, and that that gave Guy the opportunity to come in and talk about you doing a thousand or something. You know, I don't know if you're anywhere. Well, near. I, I, no, I'm nowhere near that. I don't think. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and as regards to wacky predictions, I, I totally agree with you. You know, Peter P. Bottoms has made a, a, a wacky prediction, which he stood up for and said, yeah, I wasn't right about the Arctic uh, ice melt. Yeah, I, um, I, yeah I, I, I mean, one in order, you know, if one makes predictions and they're wrong and they don't talk about why they're wrong and talk about making that prediction, then they lose credibility. Exactly. Uh, right? Yeah. So nobody believes a word they say after that on um, any prediction that they make anyway. Yeah, well, it's, it's, um, and it's surprising because, um, you know, the, there seems to be a, a, a kind of um, a kind of uh, cult following for McPherson, which uh, which it really doesn't matter what he says. Uh, he's he, there's always uh, there's always a, a comeback from people that he was meaning this or he's meaning that or you're taking it this way, or you're taking it that way, or you're taking it wrongly. Well, you know, um, I just want to say, but when he says yeah. says, says well, things like this, it, it, there's there's an issue here. There's an issue. You shouldn't be saying things like this. And he said it was based on the fact that he was expecting another storm to occur in the Arctic. Um, and that would well, blow away all the ice, you know. All uh, the ice, right. I mean, we had this large storm when we reached the minimum of sea ice in, in 2012, you know, and it knocked off, you know, it ran for a couple of weeks in August, and it um, kind of chewed up the ice and separated it. And, mm, you know, that yeah. was a record melt year. So, um, but I think it's important to always distinguish with listeners, you know, what is... Um, what what is what is uh, fact like? What is uh, fact to the best yes. of our you know scientific fact? Yeah. Um, you know what things do we know, um, and what things are we speculating on? And whenever it comes to you know what's going to happen in the future, there's a bit of uh, speculation or opinion or sort of gut feeling of what's going to happen, mm. even if there's a trend, you know, like the sea ice, for example, the exponential trend downward, you know, if that trend continues, then yes, we will have no sea ice in the Arctic by 2020, 2021, yeah, 2022, exactly, yeah. that sort of thing. If you just follow the trend, so unless that trend changes, um, you know, there could be some 
uh, negative feedback, which slows it down, um, that we don't know about. But yep. so, you know, to the best of our knowledge, if that trend continues, then this will happen. And and uh, if something happens that we're not aware of or that in the climate system, and mm-hmm. then um, that trend can change. And, and, and we then will be, you know, we're not going to reach the point where we thought we were going to reach. Something else will happen, right? So I think it's always important to clarify that. And, uh, you know, not sensationalize um, things. I mean, things are bad enough to, you know, exaggerate what's going to happen is, is just not, uh, doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I totally agree um, with that, Paul. Um, uh, sensationalism, uh, it's, it's not healthy, but it's also not healthy in, in terms of um, the amount you can actually traumatize people because he does have a lot of people that follow. So if he does provide a lot of information, but he doesn't actually, you know, a lot of half decent information as well. Um, yes. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I have a bit of time for that, although the, his presentations seem to repeat themselves. Um, um, in almost um, ad verbatim, you know. Um, so watch one, and you've kind of seen them all. Uh, very little new comes up. But um, whereas your videos, um, you're always concentrating on one specific area of, of the climate system or whatever, and they're really, really informative. Um, so I'd much prefer to watch your videos than watch Guy do another presentation somewhere, you know. Um, so that's just my, my point of view on it. But, but what I was saying is that when, when you make predictions like this you actually traumatize people and there's a lot of people that um, saw this predictions uh, about the, the Arctic ice, saw the predictions about everybody being dead by October see, see, saw other predictions about 6 degrees uh, centigrade rise uh, uh, by next year, about civilization collapsing next year and they, they were all running away panicking now who knows the effect that's going to have on people and I just wish you'd think a little bit more about that so, yeah, I think that's very important too. Yeah, I mean, you, 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 you know, you, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely. I mean, that's why I had to come back and talk about, you know, all or nothing thinking, and and did those videos for that very point. I was very worried about how some of the things that were said um, could really affect people yeah. deeply and in the wrong way and unnecessarily.